Welcome from breezy and foggy Edinburgh. I'm Agilus Kagas, Chief Scientist at Input Output and Professor at the University of Edinburgh. Today I will give you a short whiteboard video about reward sharing and pledging in Cardano. In any resource-based consensus protocol, resource holders are responsible for carrying out the basic tasks of ledger maintenance. This is true both for proof of work and proof of stake ledgers. The main difference is the resource used, hashing power versus coins. Any resource holder can become a protocol operator by installing and running software compatible with the platform. Resource holders can also pool their resources together and form a pool. In such pools, resource holders can have different responsibilities, but typically one will be the pool operator and will be responsible for running a server organizing the transactions that are to be placed in the ledger, while others will be more passive. In this way, pooling splits the population of resource holders to delegators and operators. The problem here is to have a situation where operators have too little skin in the game. This is important because subverting a resource-based consensus protocol requires controlling a large amount of the active resources, say 51%. So if just a handful of operators have very high leverage in the sense of having 51% of the resources delegated to them, then the system can become much easier to attack. For this reason, it is important for a resource-based consensus protocol to have a mechanism for controlling the leverage of operators and having an oversight of how pooling takes place. <coughs> Uncontrollable pooling, incentivized by economies of scale, can lead to highly centralized configurations. This brings us to one of the very innovative features of the mechanism that we use in the Ouroboros protocol in Cardano. Prospective pool operators declare themselves as such on-chain and stakeholders can delegate to them their stake. In this way, pool operators acquire an identity within the system and participants can use the blockchain itself as a pooling coordination mechanism. Moreover, the blockchain guarantees everyone's rewards as participating in a stake pool becomes a smart contract between the operator and the delegates and also, very importantly, keeps track of the performance of pool operators. Now, given such pooling coordination take place on chain, it is possible for stakeholders to have a better understanding of highly leveraged operators and avoid delegating to them. In fact, you can design the ledger rules to adapt based on the way pooling takes place and favor certain configurations exactly because all the pertinent information is on chain. In this way, it is possible to introduce mechanisms on chain to steer the system towards highly decentralized states. To achieve that, the mechanism that we have introduced has two additional important features that are built in. The first is that rewards of any pools are capped to a particular level controlled by the parameter k. Right now, the parameter k stands at 500. When the total stake of a pool reaches 1 over k of the circulating supply, the rewards stop increasing. The second is that available rewards are split in two big pieces controlled by the parameter alpha which now stands at 0.3. Each pool can claim a slice from the left piece and a slice from the right piece. With the current parameter choice of 0.3, the reward spy is split in the two pieces of approximately 77% on the left and 23% on the right. A pool can claim a slice from the left piece in proportion to its total stake up to the 1 over k threshold. It can also claim a slice 
from the right piece according to what we call a pledge benefit function. Now, the left slice is a reward to the pool for being popular with stakeholders during their on-chain pooling coordination. The more stake delegated to the pool, the larger the left slice will be in a direct linear relation up to the bound determined by the k parameter. The right slice is an extra additional reward to the pool for having an operator that is not too leveraged based on the evidence that exists on chain. The pledge benefit function, which determines the size of this slice, increases with the size of the pledge of stake that an operator commits to their pool. The influence of pledging is similarly capped by 1 over k. To appreciate the power of this mechanism, consider a stakeholder that does not wish to become an operator. Without an on-chain coordination mechanism for pooling, that stakeholder has only one option to participate as an operator. If that does not work for them, they will have to resort to off-chain pooling. Instead, using our on-chain pooling mechanism, the stakeholder has now two options to engage with the protocol, be an operator or a delegator. And having these two choices leads to higher participation and transparency, as well as, ultimately, better decentralization. How attractive is on-chain pooling is controlled by the alpha parameter. A low alpha grows the left piece of the rewards pie, making on-chain pooling more attractive. However, a low alpha can also create the incentive for operators to propose many identities in the system and in this way attempt to increase their leverage. They may even try to do this covertly in what amounts to a civil attack. For this reason, there is no right or wrong position for the alpha parameter. It is a trade-off between two desirable objectives, incentivizing on-chain pooling and de-incentivizing civil attacks. Combined with the action of the community, IHK monitors the effects of these parameters, as well as the other functions of the reward sharing scheme to ensure Cardano reaches and maintains a highly decentralized configuration. The current configuration is already highly decentralized with thousands of operators sharing the responsibility for running the protocol. Nevertheless, OHK may still make, make small adjustments to improve the experience of stakeholders with the mechanism. And when Cardano's on-chain governance system will take over, any future parameter adjustments will be completely to the hands of the community. So this brings us to the end of this whiteboard that describes the main features of the reward sharing scheme used in Cardano. Hope you enjoyed this video. Goodbye.